when you meditate during the Dharma talk. 99% of your attention should be with your breath. Let the talk be in the background. Because the Dharma is found inside the mind. The Dharma that's words is just pointers. And so as you listen to the talk, remind yourself, okay, that they're pointing inside your mind. So if you're inside your mind paying attention to what you're doing, you're already at the right place. You don't need the talk. Certainly when you find yourself wandering outside, you run up against the talk and it points you back in. Because the real ignorance is not ignorance of words or principles, it's ignorance of what's going on in the mind. In particular, it's ignorance of seeing how you're causing yourself suffering. Altogether, it's ignorance of four noble truths. Ignorance where ignorance of where the suffering is right now, and of what you're doing to cause the suffering, and of what might you, you you might be doing to put an end to the suffering, and actually seeing the suffering end. Those are the four things you could be paying attention to. Because attention to. there are things that are happening right inside. They're not happening in the words. The words simply point you. Okay. Suffering. Your experience of suffering. Nobody else is experiencing it. It's as close as you get to a really pure experience. Because there's no way you can take it out and show it to us. And there's no way you can compare who's suffering more, exactly what it tastes like or what it feels like. But it is something you can know for yourself. So you have to pay attention to that. So when we talk about the Four Noble Truths, they're not some abstract teaching that dates from thousands of years ago, peculiar to India. There are things that are happening right here, right now, and they're happening very directly in your awareness. So to chip away at that ignorance, you focus on the breath. In the Buddha's analysis of suffering, from ignorance comes fabrication, and bodily fabrication is the breath. If you breathe in ignorance, it can be a condition for suffering. If you breathe with knowledge and awareness, it can help cut through suffering. It helps you see your ignorance more clearly, and as you see your ignorance more clearly, that replaces it with knowledge. So when you're focused on the breath, learning to breathe comfortably, allowing the mind to relate in a comfortable way with the breath, you're taking your stand against ignorance. And all the ignorant thought processes that go on through the day, you're putting up a resistance to them. You want to understand them. And it's through understanding them that you can go beyond them, you can transcend them. And these principles are universal. That's why the Buddha called them noble truth. The word ariya also means standard, in the sense of universal standard. They apply to all of us. There are no exceptions. So that's something we all have in common. We each experience it for ourselves alone, but we have it in common. Suffering and the cause of suffering, which is why the path to the end of suffering is something that's universal. It doesn't matter what country you come from, what your background, what your language. The path works across the board if you apply it, if you realize this is something really universal that applies to you as much as it does to everybody else. Most of us like to think of ourselves as exceptions to the rule. It's going to be different for us somehow, especially when we hear about all the work that the various Johns put into the practice. We like to think, well, maybe 
we're better educated, maybe we know more in our culture. Well, no, we don't. Problems are just the same. They're dressed up a little bit differently in each case, but we all have the same problem. And John Fu, I once quoted a John Munn saying, people are all alike, but then they're really not. But then when you really get down to it, they really are. And John Fuang's comment on that was, take that and think about it for a while. There are some differences, but the, what we have in common is what's really important. It's like that chant we had just now, aging, illness, and death, separation. These are things we all have in common. And that chant is a little bit lacking in something, because in the original sutta, what it says, everybody should think about this every day, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're, whether you're lay or ordained. Remind yourself, I'm subject to, subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death. Or as in the Thai translation, these things are normal for me. Subject to being separated from the things that I love. Life starts out and you're always learning new things, gaining new things, but then it reaches a point where they all start going away. What you do have left is your actions. You will, you will fall heir to what you do, you say, and you think, depending on whether, whether it's skillful or unskillful. And as the Buddha said, if you think about these truths as they apply to yourself, that keeps you from doing unskillful things. You realize, oh my gosh, if I allow myself to think a lot of unskillful stuff today, the results are going to come. They're going to seep out into my words. They're going to seep out into my actions. I'll start not just thinking unskillful things, but doing and saying unskillful things, and it all begins to pile up. Do you want that? Say, so, well, no. So those thoughts are meant to keep you in line, to keep you from doing harmful things to yourself, harmful things to other people. But then the sutta goes on to say that you should remind yourself that these things don't just apply to you, they apply to everybody, no matter where you go. This lifetime, the next lifetime, whether it's 